Hello everyone and welcome to a very special 64 bits tutorial. If you have seen our latest video on the main channel, Cult of the Bell, then you might be interested in how we actually made this video. I do a lot of tutorials on the 64 bits extra channel, so be sure to subscribe. I'm going to explain to you guys in a really easy fashion how to uh, set up a character in Photoshop and then animate it in Adobe After Effects. Today we are going to animate the Cult of the Lamb version of Bob. And Bob is a character in Animal Crossing that we designed. If you are part of the Patreon that we have over at patreon.com slash 64 bits, you can actually download this file and animate along with us. And of course you can also use your own character. I'll tell you how we set this up. We have Bob here and Bob is actually made out of little pieces or layers that are actually his limbs and his eyes and all that and we even have some different eye states like let me turn off the eyes in Photoshop and now let me turn on the closed eyes so he can be happy and he can be well content or maybe he's sad or maybe he's really happy and we are going to import this character into Adobe After Effects and then set him up and give him a little animation so I hope you can follow along with me so with After Effects open instead of going to new composition uh, right away I'm going to import file and then I'm going to select my villagers Photoshop file, double click that, make sure it's on composition, retain layer sizes, editable layer styles, that's fine. Okay, now in this file, if I double click this composition that it made, I can actually see all the characters that are in the Photoshop file as well. Let me quickly turn off all the layers and I also make this transparent so I can really closely take a look at Bob. Now I actually want to make a duplicate of this composition so that if I want to make another animation from scratch and start with this pose, I don't have to re-import the whole PSD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it, say refill, refill layer source in project. You can see a long list got imported by After Effects. I'm going to just drag this one out create a new folder I'm gonna call it comps and put Bob in there and this is all optional but just to work in a tidy workflow I'm gonna call this Bob setup I'm gonna double click this and I'm gonna take all these body parts and I'm gonna connect them all together in this case I'm gonna start by connecting the head to the body so I do that by clicking the item going down going to head and you can see the parent and link window here and since I named all the layers correctly I'm gonna drag the little lasso tool from head to body so if I move the body right now it's gonna stick together I'm gonna do that to all the body parts of the face as well and connect them to the head the arms and the tail we connect to the body and then the legs for now we're gonna keep him as his so that if he rotates his body his legs don't also move like this we don't want that now I want to make sure everything rotates over the correct axis so I'm going to like this is not good we wanted to rotate over this point so what I can do is I can go to pan behind click that see the little target arrow right there in the center I'm gonna drag it all the way down to the neck and if I select the rotation tool now you can see it actually moves in the right position I'm gonna do that to all the body parts so the arms are gonna be at the shoulders and the tail the body the legs on the hips and all the eyes are actually all good for now so let's test it real quick yes you can move correctly this looks pretty good yes okay fine but as you can see the characters don't really have joints and we can simply solve that with something that I think is really fun a really fun tool is the puppet tool and if you go to the puppet position pin tool right here in the corner or control P you click that and with the layer selected I'm gonna put a pin on the shoulder the elbow and around on the hand so if I move them actually warp them around and this is a tool that you can find in Adobe animate and spine and moho and it's a lot of fun but just uh, be careful because you can go really nutty with it and it will look all bad and distorted let's do that to the other arm as well grab the pin tool L shoulder elbow hand I'm gonna do that to the tail as well let's do three I think there we go let's do that to the legs as well hip knee foot hip knee and foot so now our character can actually bend down or put his legs up maybe walk so when I start using that puppet tool you can actually see that everything opens up right here and that's because it's actually creating a lot of keyframes and we need those keyframes I can open these up but as you can see I need to open up a lot of things and I only have so much room in my timeline but you can see indeed three keyframes one for each of those little yellow dots however if I press U with everything deselected press U again you can see it only opens up the things that have keyframes you can see the left leg I can click one of the pins and yes I can move him around I want if I made a mistake and always press reset now if I go forward in time and I want to lift this leg up you can see it's making new keyframes. So now it will animate in between. Let me select those and delete those. Something important you gotta know with After Effects is that you always have to turn on keyframes before animating them. So let's select the head, move up, 
Let's open this up, transform. I'm gonna press the little stopwatch on position, on scale and rotation. So if I go forward in time and I move the head, you can see it automatically makes a keyframe. But if I turn off the opacity, you can see it does not animate him. That state is permanent because I did not turn on the stopwatch there. Let's turn it all the way back to up to 100 and we can see we have a little animation now. You can squash it position it and now my character will well it's a little weak but that's a little nod i guess let's delete those keyframes now what i always try to do is before we animate anything i will turn on the keyframes of things that i think need animation and there's a lot of layers right now so if i can't find the body once i select it i can press the letter x and X marks the spot, it will jump right to the body. If I don't want to trill over everything like this and then turn all the keyframes on, instead I will select it and I will say P, hold shift, press R, hold shift, press S. So now with shift P or shift S, shift R, I can turn off position, but I can also turn them on. There we go. And again, with nothing selected, I can press U. And I'll scale up the timeline a little bit. I can see all the keyframes right here. So with this, I think I got Bob's head up. I'm going to go to my project panel, duplicate it with Control D, and it will make another composition called Setup 2. I'm gonna turn this into, let's do Wave. Now I made an exact copy of the Bob's head up composition so that every time I wanna make an animation with the character, I don't have to do that whole setup process all over again. All right, so let's make a wave animation. Got all my keyframes. Again, if they're not there, you can press U to close them all down and U to open them all up again. Let's say U is universe, like everything. Let's move forward in time. Let's say half a second. Let's move his head up a little bit. And then let's move his body up a little bit as well. And then maybe move his arm up like this. It's gonna wave and you can put his other arm inside his side. Again, watch out. You don't wanna squash and stretch this too much, otherwise it'll look bad. Grab the tail. Maybe the tail can go down a little bit as well. So let's move that left and right. And yeah, he's putting his arm up right now. However, it didn't make a keyframe everywhere. As you can see with the head, it only made a keyframe for rotation because we didn't touch all the other keyframes. And what I tend to do, if I know this is gonna be a key point for all the body parts, it's gonna move down all the way down. I'm gonna click and drag one of the empty keyframes and I'm gonna click and hold it all the way up to the top and it will automatically move up real fast. And now we'll have a keyframe for everything. So that if I continue animating, I know for sure that it's gonna animate from that point. If you wanna zoom in or zoom out on the keyframes, I can do that too. A little, little mountain, zoom out a little bit, a little bit. And if I wanna play it, you press space. There we go. Now let's go to around one second and then move his arm back a little bit. And as you can see, I can't really select the arm. Why can't I select the arm? No, I can't select the bottom. Body, I can select the head, but the arm is a little hard. That's because the puppet pin effect is, well, an effect. So you gotta click the original location and that's right there. If you can't find it there, if you can't find it anywhere because it's invisible, you can actually just go down and select the left arm right there. Pick the puppet pin and let's move his arm down a little bit. And uh, maybe his body forwards a little bit, grab his tail, move that up a little bit. We can move the other arm a little bit as well, a little bit. And his head, maybe tilt it forward a little bit and even squash and stretch it a little bit, there we go. Move it down. So if I move it now, all right, that's a, that's a light animation, but it works. Let's do the same trick again, because I know I wanna have a keyframe everywhere. There's an empty keyframe here. Click it, drag it all the way up, and it will shoot all the way up, and perfect. So if I play it now, well, that's still very stiff, but that's fine. So you know what? I'm going to ease these keyframes a little bit so the animations are not that stiff. So you can see a little diamond right here and that means, a little diamond means really strict and linear animations. But if I select them all, I'm gonna do that by going all the way down, selecting all the keyframes and going up again. And then right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. That means that everything is eased right there. And you can see it actually turns into little hourglasses. So I'll think about it as this is really rigid animation and this is really smooth animation. And if I play it now, you can see the animation is already, well, it's a lot smoother without. See, that's a little stiff. And now with, that seems to be a little smoother. So this would be smoothed out and this would be without smoothing. And this is both of them together. And you can see the top one is smooth and the bottom one isn't. So make sure you have those little hourglass keyframes if you want to have your animation look a little smoother. All right, well, it's also a little slow. If I wanna speed this up, I can go all the way down, select all my keyframes, it will shoot up again. And let's move them together a little bit more. Let's say eight frames, it says so right here in the top eight frames. And then go down, do it again, the last keyframes, and I move it to, let's say 16. So if I play it now, that's a little faster, that's nice. 
and obviously he's got to continue that animation. Luckily, the newer versions of After Effects let me select all the keyframes, press Ctrl-C, Ctrl-V. So if I play it now, the character waves, and maybe have a wave up one more time, select that row of keyframes real quick, Ctrl-C, Ctrl-V, see how it works right now. There we go. And then let's move it all the way back, just by copying the first keyframe to the last keyframe, right? Control C, Control V. So let's preview our animation. There we go. And what we can do is we can zoom all the way out on our timeline and grab this thing right here, which is the end marker. And I'm gonna make it two and a half seconds. So if I play it now, it will only play exactly that part. Now you're gonna say this animation still looks really stiff. And that's true. That's because we wanna add some follow through. That means that if an object moves, the extension of that object moves a little later. For example, if my arm would move like this, my hand would kind of like follow it. That would look a little better, a little smoother than when I move it like this, right? So a simple way of doing that is just selecting the arm. I'm gonna press X to jump to that layer and you can see the puppet pins for frame two and three, which is the elbow and the hand. I can actually move those up a little bit. I can even push puppet pin three, which is the hand, up a little bit more. So if I play it now, the animation will be a lot smoother. This is with the follow through and let's control Z out of that real quick so you can see the difference. And this is Without, that's really stiff. So let's do it with, move those keyframes up a little bit. We can actually do that to the tail as well. See what happens there. I'm gonna press the tail. I'm gonna press X so I don't have to scroll down. There it is. Select the keyframes that are the center of his tail and the end of his tail. Move that up a little bit. And select the top row keyframes, which is the tip of the tail. See that it's actually marked yellow now. And let's play that real quick. There we go. Look at that tail. That's a lot more fluid and bouncy. Select the head. Well, we can even do that to the scale. See what happens there. Well, that's interesting. Not super interesting. Maybe push the rotation keyframes in a little bit. Instead of out, we push them in. That looks pretty fun. In the beginning, I also added a lot of, let me close all that down by pressing U. So everything closes down. I'm actually gonna lock everything but the head so I can accidentally select it. Earlier, I said I have a happy mouth and a sad mouth and I have eyes that are closed and I have eyes that are closed but the other way around. Now I can't animate the eyeball here. I can't animate this. What I can do is animate the transparency. So if I scroll through the animation and right there, let's say around, around there, I want him to close his eyes, I can. So so if I select both layers and I can open them up and drill them open and go to opacity or instead I can go to T of opacity. There we go, opacity and turn on the animation for that. Now let's go all the way to the beginning because we want it to be exactly 100% here. And then at that point, you, we want it to be 0%. Well, if I'm not sure if I'm on the keyframe, I can always click these little arrows here. Make sure I jump on them. And you can see it's a little gemstone here that's colored. So I know I'm exactly on the keyframe and I can actually go opacity, scrub it all the way down. Well, well, obviously I need to turn on his eyes as well. And I need to animate the transparency of that as well, or the opacity. Open it up, go all the way to the beginning. If I turn on the stopwatches for this, go to the next keyframe, it's right there. And we create another keyframe right here, but turn down the opacity on the first frame, right? Well, we don't want him to crossfade though, but well, this is pretty close to what we want. Let's uh, fix that. Let's fix the crossfade. What we can actually do is turn these keyframes into what is called old keyframes. The little diamond keyframes, they are linear motion. So left to right. And the hourglass keyframes, they are smoothed out. So everything will move slowly in and out. But the hold keyframe will actually make it jump from one position to another. And we can do that really quickly. So instead of going to keyframe assistant and going easy, we're actually going to go to toggle hold keyframes. And you can see they turn into little squares or actually part linear, part square, but that's fine. If I scrub through it now, you can actually see him close his eyes in a single frame. Around here, I want his eyes to be open again. So let's do control C, control V. If I play it now, there we go. Let's actually move those keyframes up a little bit. It's a little faster, right there. And you know what? Let's do his mouth as well. Let's turn on the happy mouth and the mouth neutral. Select them both, then press T of opacity. Turn on the stopwatch, go all the way to the beginning. Let's turn off the happy mouth. Let's make a keyframe for the neutral mouth. Go to the next keyframe and then turn neutral off. So if I got the same problem, they're crossfading. So I'm gonna select them both, right click, toggle hold keyframe. So if I play it now, there we go. And of course, around here, I want the animation to jump back to the regular mouse. Let's copy both keyframes. There we go. So if I play it now. There we go. And there you have your whole animation. Now, all we have to do is give this a little background. So let's do a little background. Let's do layer, new, and then say solid. 
And let's say, let's make it a, uh, like a soft pink. Press OK, OK. And now my character is gone. Obviously I have to click and drag this layer all the way to the bottom. So if I play it now, I have a little background and I can even export it by going to composition. I can either pick render queue or media encoder render queue. Now to keep it simple, we're gonna go with render queue. The render queue should open up right here and click the little arrow and YouTube usually uses around this setting right here, H264. Maybe this gets a little technical, but let's click that one and let's say where we want to save it, Bob Wave. And let's save that right here and press render. Let's wait a little second and boom, it's done. And there we have our little animation. Now, obviously this is just a simple animation, but this should give you a good overview on how to set up a character from Photoshop in After Effects, animate it and even export it. And if you look at our other video about how we actually made Call of the Lamb, then you actually see how we imported into Blender and actually turn it into a whole animation with all the characters coming together. So be sure to check that video out as well, which isn't going into detail on how to do every step. It's just going to show you how the project was put together. If you want to try this yourself with these characters, be sure to go to our Patreon and download the Photoshop file that I've been using in this video. And also consider supporting us on Patreon because it's really hard to get by with just ad revenue and it supports the channel and it makes us be able to make more animations like this let me know if you have any questions in the comments or on the discord channel if you do not already have photoshop and after effects you can also check a link in the description and sign up today and get 30 days free and you'll also be supporting the channel so be sure to check that out as well thank you so much this was a beginner tutorial on how to set up characters in photoshop and animate them in after effects uh, see you in the next one be sure to subscribe like everything bye bye